The next thing we want to do is to get the data for a particular user. I want to say, I want to ask for Philip, and I want to get this data about him or me. If I ask for John, I want to get this data about John. If I ask for Carol, I want to get this data about Carol. So how do I do that? I need to make another route with app.get. This one is going to have a variable in it. So I'm just going to say slash users like before, but now I'm going to do slash colon user ID. So what this does is if I ask for a URL that's slash users and then slash, this colon means this is a variable, like a template variable means if I have slash user slash anything else, I want to use this user ID in my um, in my uh, function that I'm going to run. So once again, I'm going to write a callback function, anonymous, oh, I just scroll down. Sorry, let me scroll back up again. Just make sure nothing funny was going on. I just scrolled accidentally. Um, I have a function here, right? Slash user slash user ID. Uh, oops, I'm going to put the body here or the parameters. Uh, now let's again let's just console log hello just to make sure I'm, I'm working I'll just say hello <laughs> okay so now what I can do is restart run again so now if I say slash user slash let's say you know Bobby once again I'll hang because I don't know what to do but it's actually running hello right so if I say slash whatever uh, J it ran hello again. So every time I press enter, I can just keep, you know, every time I press enter, it will run this function and print out hello. Okay, so that's just to verify it works, but printing a hello is not that useful. So what we really want is to get the name out of this user ID, right? I wanna, when I call this with J, I wanna get the fact that this is J. When I call it with Bobby, I wanna get the fact that this is Bobby <laughs> or Bobby. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new variable called name to look up. And it's called rec params user ID. Okay, what does this mean? This is just a variable I'm defining or a constant more precisely. REQ is the request object. That's the request that came in from my browser, the request. Params is a special field of REQ that contains the parameters that request. And finally, dot user ID is this user ID parameter with the colon. So Express has a special way of huh, expressing the fact that if you put a colon in front of a path, uh, it will, it will uh, take that and make that into a parameter here that you can grab out. And we're gonna assign it to name to look up. So uh, let's console log instead of hello, let's console log name to look up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if we can grab the user ID which came from the URL here Right? We're gonna grab this user ID, which is here, assign it to name to look up, and console log it to the screen. So when I uh, run again, uh, let's run with J, right? So this is user slash lowercase j. When I press enter, notice how J is now displayed. And if I put Bobby <laughs> with one B, Bobby is displayed. If I put anything after this, you know, uh, a bunch of garbage characters, those garbage characters are displayed. So this means that Express is parsing this URL, which has the format user slash, slash users more precisely, slash something, and grabbing that something, slash user slash something, grabbing that something and putting it into a user ID field and REQ params that I can grab out into string and then I can actually operate on it. So question is what happens if I just say ASDF whatever without the users, if I do that, then, it, then Express can't find it. And it can't find it because uh, there is no route called AASD whatever, right? Because you need slash users in front of it. You either need slash users by itself or slash users in front of some user ID or something in my static files that it can handle. But this weird string is not in any of them. So same thing with Philip. If I just say Philip, I can't find where Philip is because it's not a static file, right? There's no static file named Philip. It's not slash users and it's not slash users user ID. To get a match for Philip, I would need to say slash users slash Philip. And now uh, it hangs again. I'm just gonna do it again this window. So when I do this, you'll notice that here it prints out Philip. I actually ran it twice because uh, if I run it again, it'll <laughs> it's still hanging, but um, it should print out Phillips again, Phillips <laughs> again, right? Okay. 
So uh, we have the hanging problem because we haven't sent anything back to the user, right? We haven't sent any data with result. That's why it's hanging still, right? Remember how until you do an res.send to send something back to the browser, it will the browser will just hang there and just wait for you. Okay, so what we should we send back? What we actually want is not just the name. We want to look up the name in the database, right? We want to look up the name of the fake database. So what we're going to do is we're going to say val for value, which is fake database name to look up. So what does this mean? This is using the brackets notation to grab an entry out of fake database. So when name to look up is Philip, it will look up Philip here and grab me this object. When name is John, it'll grab me this object. When name is Carol, it'll grab me this object. If the name is something that's not in there, like Bobby, it will, I think, return undefined, but we'll, we'll double check to make sure. So um, let's console log this as well. Name to look up, and then we're going to console log a string that's like an arrow just to say what it's pointing to, and then val. So I'm trying to console log the name, an arrow, and the value that's a result of looking it up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to res.send the value. I'm just going to send the value back. So what am I sending back? I'm sending back the value that I looked up in the database. What am I printing? I'm printing the name and the arrow and the value. So remember, this console log prints in my console, my terminal here, and the res.send goes and sends to the browser. Okay, so let's test this in action. Clear it. I'm going to run again. So now my my URL is localhost 3000 users Philip. When I press enter, let's see what happens. On the terminal, it prints Philip, which is my name, and then the arrow, and then lo and behold, it prints job professor pet cat, which is exactly the value that it looked up for me because my value is itself an object, professor cat. And then beautifully, it's send rest.sendval, which sent the job professor pet cat object, uh, which is serialized in a JSON format with the double quoted strings, to my browser. So from the browser's perspective, I visited a URL slash user slash Philip, and I've gotten back the entry from the database, right? That's the entry I want. So let's wait. What happens if I do slash user slash John? I get this entry job is student, pet is uh, dog. And if I do Carol, unsurprisingly, I get job engineer, pet is bear. So using these URLs now, a web browser can access the fake database on the server. And in, in real applications, this is what actually happens, except that the database is some production grade database, not just an object I created in my JavaScript file. But the idea is just the same. Okay, so now that's done, what happens if I look up someone who's not in the database? So if I look up Bobby, Bobby, uh, now it doesn't return much of anything, right? So this is kind of weird because it just returns, returns undefined, doesn't really print out anything. It's a little bit annoying to have that be undefined. So, um, so what I usually like to do, just as a precaution, is to check if a val. If val means if val is non-empty. If not val is non-empty, I'm going to send it, and else I'm just going to send an empty object. And the reason why will become clear in a second. So this is failed. So return an empty object instead of undefined. Oops, you know return empty object instead of undefined, just to make it fit on the screen. So recall that the two braces together just create an empty object. So now if val is something valid, uh, I'm going to send itself. If it's not, if it's undefined, I'm just going to send empty object. This will make things a little bit cleaner. So let's just look, let's just check that Philip prints the right thing. Perfect. It uh, prints it out and then it returns to the browser. Now let's just look at Bobby. And it's an empty object, which is fine. Okay, so um, now what we want is to uh, make the front end now. Okay, so we have this back end. This is the basically the entirety of our back end. Um, it doesn't look super fancy, but it has all the parts. So just to review the back end, uh, you can see on the Pets app V1 the whole code with comments. But just to review. We included Express. We set it to a static files directory to serve static files like my JPEG, my HTML. Create a fake database. We created a route slash users 
that allows us to do this. So anything to slash users without anything after it will return a list of all users in my database. Then we had a route call slash users slash user ID, uh, which lets us, this one, lets us put anything afterwards and look up information about a specific user like Philip or John or uh, Bobby with a lot of Bs, which is non-existent. And then finally, the all important step is to do app.listen, which actually starts the web server and listens on port 3000. So that's our entire backend. So we're gonna keep, um, let's just keep the backend running. We shouldn't need to restart it as long as it's working.